Wagwan viewers and subs, thank you so much for tuning in. Now, a lot of you guys might have been struggling with metallic colors, but by the end of this video, you will do your next metallic job with 100% success and that's guaranteed. I'm gonna show you everything you need to know to get your metallic to flow out nice and even, nice and smooth, streakless, just like this. Stay tuned. Now, the first thing you want to do is make sure you have a good color. What I have here is a bunch of spare cars of the color. I have a magnet holder that'll hold the chips on the car. I'll show you what that's like. You see where it has vehicle and you put the chip. So let's go outside and show you how we do that. All right, guys, here, here we go. This is nothing complicated. So what you want to do is put the chip inside and just place it on the car. This way you can tell, okay, this color looks good this color doesn't look good you can tell if the flakes are too big if the flakes are too fine if it's too light or if it's too dark now as a painter i can tell you it's a very good idea to have these spray out cards ready every time you spray a color so that you don't have to go trying to figure out what's gonna work the next time you get this color that's just a waste On to the next tip, extra slow reducer. Extra slow reducer is really good to use, especially when it's hot. You know, the extra slow reducer is going to help the paint to flow out really nice and smooth. You know, the reducer is going to evaporate a little slower, which gives the paint time to melt in, especially when you're doing a blend. Now let's go ahead and choose the gun for the job. I like to choose from the best when doing metallic colors. These guns are all really good guns. The cheaper guns can get the job done, but I prefer the more expensive guns such as the DV1. You could never go wrong with this gun. Does such a good job atomizing the paint. All right guys, let's walk into the booth and see what we have going on. Now let me explain what this is, right? This car was in an accident. We replaced the fender, so there is a new fender right there. And then over here, we have a new bumper. But what I did first was I seal the fender and then I paint the whole thing. This is the color that I'm supposed to blend with this color right here. See how they looks a little different? But that's okay, it's good enough for me to go ahead and blend it. So we're blending into the rear door, blending into the hood, painting the bumper in full, and blending into the fender. I'm not even gonna go up here because that means I have to put paint on the entire hood. So I'm just gonna keep it very small right down here. Now let's talk paint gun settings. For this DV1 gun, you don't need a lot of pressure. Around 16 to 20 PSI is usually good enough. Keep the fan wide open because I want all my flakes, you know, my paint to flow out evenly. Now as I spray, I will show you how smooth the end of the paint is going to be or what it should look like. See here, you see how my droplets at the end is not too big which means I can get a smooth flow all the way through. If you want to know how I set up my fluid adjustment, just refer to one of my gun review videos. I set it up the same for each and every gun. Now let's get into the blending. What I have here is some clear base or blending additive. Now the blending additive is going to help your base coat to melt in 
at the end of your blend or even the whole panel on top of you already having the extra slow reducer this is gonna be a big help as well so you have everything i'm giving you everything that you need for success i rarely use the blending additive because i have enough experience i only use this when i have a very tight blend you know not a lot of room left and that's when i will refer to the blending additive because the extra slow reducer already does the job that i needed to do the blending additive also give you the effect of the clear so as you lay down your base into the wet bed of blending additive you can tell if your color is good or not now let's go ahead and get our first coat of base on here now on my first coat i just want to get some coverage you know and nothing special here just getting some cover dusting the paint on very nice and easy you don't need to let the clear base or the blending additive flash before you put your paint on and then on the second coat i'm just gonna get into the blending and i'll show you a little tip Now make sure that you go ahead and tack the car after every coat, you know, especially in your blended area because there's going to be a buildup of overspray in the area that you don't want to go fully with the paint. So that can leave that end of your blend very rough and then you can start to see lines and streaks now let's talk a little bit about technique notice how i flick my wrist when i blend this paint now i don't want to go too far all the way out here because that would defeat the purpose of blended so you keep it nice and small in one of the area on your first coat your first your second coat should be different from the first the second coat should go a little bit further where you're constantly trying to lose the end of that blend now the reducer and the blending additive is already doing a great job of that so you're just helping the process go along. Here's another valuable tip. Now before you go ahead and clear, this is called a sun gun. That's what I'm shining on the car. This will tell me if my color is good, I have enough coverage and exactly how my finished product is going to look outside. I'm all done with painting here. My metallic was laid down really nice courtesy of the gun, the reducer, the gun technique, the settings, the blending additive. And that is what we're looking like before we go ahead and clear. When it's all done, we set it outside in the sun so you can see all that flakes. Glistening.
you can't. And here is the final finish guys, outside all done, put back together and in the sun. So thank you guys so much for tuning in, like, share, subscribe, leave a comment, let me know what you think, what your process is when going about blending or spraying metallic colors. Until next time, I'll see you on the next one.